الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد First of all, we praise Allah Taala for gathering us and bringing us together in a gathering in Allah Taala, which is we hope Mubarak, which is blessed. He Subhanahu Wa Taala has gathered upon uh, us upon Tawheed and upon Sunnah and upon the Minhaj Salaf Salih. This is a great ni'mah, and you've heard many words today. And bi'idhni Allah Ta'ala, you've gotten much benefit from my words, uh, insha'Allah Ta'ala. Uh, I hope that Allah Ta'ala will allow them to find a place in your heart and that they will be, bi'idhni Allah Ta'ala, uh, a hujjah evidence for us on the day of judgment rather than evidence against us. I want to center around about two or three issues actually. One is the nuk, the sins. The other is al wahda, unity, wa adam al tafarruq, not splitting and separating. The other one is the illness of hub riasa, loving to be in charge, loving to be the head, having to be in charge, having to run all affairs. So we. I would try by any light to Allah to cover these very briefly, just enough to throw some light up on them so that we benefit. Because a lot of talk without action is of no benefit. And this uh, the gatherings such as these are not for entertainment, but to focus us or refocus us upon what our purpose is, and what our goals are, and what our aims and objectives are, and the program that we're supposed to be about completing and trying to perfect. Of the new sins. You've heard it from the angle of maybe sometimes a brother may be on the mimbar or brother may be in a circle and he'll gira and he loving the deen of Allah ta'ala may make him talk about the sins of the people. And this is something good in one sense, in the sense that he has a gira. He has concern regarding the people. But it may be something bad in another sense from the standpoint of spreading the knowledge of the sin. Because we want our mujtami'at, our gatherings to be ta'hid, to be pure. And one of the manners that this purity has been shown in the Quran and the Sunnah in this manner is that the tongues used to be safe from mentioning them. To the degree that even Allah Taala, when He talks about, if you will, sexual matters in the Quran, He used kinaya, which is an Arabic expression using different words. She is for you a covering, and you are for her a covering. Libas. Even though Allah Taala is able to speak as He wants to speak, and to say whatever He wants to say, but this is the adab or the manner. Also, the ayat in Surah Nur would show that. You don't want to spread that which is evil about the believers. Someone who's unaware of a particular forbidden practice should not become aware of it in our sittings and therefore become familiar or interested in it and may fall into it. So we want to keep our tongues safe from talking about these sins in that way. This doesn't stop us from saying in the general sense but the specifics we should leave out. Sins is something all of us have to deal with. Sins is something all of us have to correct. Sins are, are those matters which would destroy us. And when we speak about the matter of unity, it comes into play. For the hadith of the Prophet that no two individuals are together, loving one another for the pleasure of Allah, and then suddenly you find that they separate, except for what? a sin that one of them has committed. The sin will stop you from accepting the haq. Sinning will stop us from realizing the haq. Listen to the following text that we have here, the Nusus. That the shawm of the nun wa asi ma'alum. And the evilness and the filthiness of sins is known. 
The effect of sins upon the heart is, is great, is severe, because of what it placed upon the heart of rust and of darkness, which weakens the heart, which therefore weakens, weakens the akal, the intellect. So the heart that the, each individual constantly commits sins, not the one who falls into it every so often, the one who it is exception not to rule. We're not talking about that one. We're talking about the one who makes sins, they dine or who. That's his thing that he does. Or that's the thing that she does. The sinning leads to a weakness in the heart, which leads to a weakness in the intelligence. So this one is not able to understand the haq, to have perception of the haq, to so work, to comprehend the haq. This type of heart is far removed from understanding the haq, let alone seeking the haq, and wanting the haq, and desiring the haq, and following the haq. Call the Shaykh Islam and tell him, Allah, just like an individual can close his eyes, Ibn Taymiyyah says, just like an individual can close his eyes and not see anything, when in reality he's not blind, seeing the heart because of what it has done or fallen into of sins can have a blockage or rust over it where it cannot see the truth. Even though it is not totally blind like the hearts of the kuffar. It's like you close your eyes, even though you really have sight. And once you close your eyes, you're not able to see anything. To the constant commission of sins, what it does to the heart, cause the heart to have rust upon it, cause the heart to, 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 to be dark and black, and therefore it's not able to see the haq, even though it's not blind like the heart to the kuffar. Call the Shaykh Islam and Taymiyyah, this kalam that we just mentioned, then Ibn Qayyim Allah he brings a statement that says, فَإِن طَاعَةَ فَإِنَّ طَاعَةَ النُّورِ Obedience is light. Obedience is light. وَالْمَعْسِيَ ظُلْمَ And sin is darkness. وَكُلْمَا قُوِيَ لَظُلْمَ As much as the darkness increases, then the confusion increases. You get his point. Sins are dark, a darkness. The more sins one commits, the more darkness comes. The more the darkness increases, the more confusion that is there. Hata yaka fil bid'ah. And to the person will fall into innovation. Waddalalat and going astray. Walumura muhlaka and matters that will destroy him or her. And he doesn't even sense it. He doesn't even feel it. Like a blind person going out in the middle of the night, walking by himself. Like a blind person going out in the middle of the night, walking by himself. This is because of what the sin will do to the heart. وَقَرَ أَيْضًا Ibn Qayyim says وَمِنْ أُقُبَاتُهَا From the punishments of sins it has a, a particular effect upon bringing deficiency to the intelligence. نُقْصَانِ الْأَقَلِ It brings a deficiency of the sin to the intelligence. فَلَا تَجِدَ عَقِيلَيْنْ أَهْدِي مَا مُطِيَ لِلَّهِ وَالْآخَرَ آسٍ You won't find two individuals of intelligence. One of them obedient to Allah and the other disobedient, except that the one who is obedient is more intelligent, more smarter, more brilliant, like this. More complete in his, in, in his intellect. وَفِكْرُهُ asah. His ideas and his thoughts are more authentic and correct. And his opinions are more correct. And the sawab karinahu, for the most cases, being correct is 
he's coupled with being correct. He's usually correct. And because of this, you find the Quran talking to those type of people. Ulil al-Uqul, the people of intelligence. Ulil al-Bab, the people of intelligence. The Quran is talking and addressing them. O fi yani fi Allah, ya ulil al-Bab, o people of intelligence. So the Baqarah 196, 197. Fattaku Allah, fi Allah, ya ulil al-Bab, la'ala kuntu flihun. So the Ma'idah 100. Wa ma yakkaru, no one would receive admonition. Illa ulul al bab the people of intelligence. And this is plentiful throughout the Quran. And because of this, that the one who's most righteous is the one who's the most intelligent. The one who's the most sinful is the one who's the most stupid or the one who's the most dumbest. You find that the Quran Mufadila, the first in generation of Islam, they were, since they were the furthest from sinning and committing sins, they had the best tahqiq in knowledge. When it came to knowledge, there were those who had Isab al haq They would come to the truth. قَالَ الشَّاتِبِ رَحِمُ اللَّهِ فَأَمَالِ الْمُتَكَتِّمِينَ فِي إِسْلَحْ دُيَاهُ وَنْدِيرُمْ عَلَى خِلَافَ أَمَالِ الْمُتَأْخِرِينَ Yani the actions of those who came in the early generation of Islam, in those matters that corrected their deen and their dunya, is different than the actions of those who came later. And their uloom, their knowledge, is more exact. But the Sahaba had a knowledge of the Sharia that the Tabi'een did not have. And the Tabi'een had a knowledge of Sharia that the Tabi'een tab did not have. And like this. And he who looks at their lives and their statements will see that which is astonishing regarding this matter. That which is astonishing regarding this matter. Qala Karabisi, Karabisi said about Imam Ahmad. Anna Abu Abdullah, Vera Abu Abdullah, Rajulun Saleh, is a righteous man. Mithluhu yuqfikli ishabit al haq. This type of person would be graced and granted by Allah to be upon the truth. To be upon the truth. Fa ta'a, o ta'a, ta'atu, obedience, ta'fil mawjood. It preserves what is present. وتجلب المفقود it brings what is lost من العلم والحق from knowledge and truth قال سفيان ومن يعلم الله من عمل بما يعلم كفى بما لم يعلم يعني he who acts upon what he knows it will take care of him be a, uh, uh, enough for him for what he does not know and the ma'asiyah takes away the knowledge that you may already have the sins take away knowledge that you may already possess. And it takes away the barakah, the blessing of the ilm. Call him Mas'ur anhu. Verily, I believe that a man will lose knowledge based upon the sins that he commit. Verily, I believe that a man will lose knowledge based upon the sins that he commit. And Shaykh Islam and Taymi Allah says, Allah Taala criticizes the people upon this fact of their sins. That one of the things that he criticizes about them, that the sins will remove the huda. Yes, you got the guidance now, but keep committing sins and see where you remain upon the guidance. Yes, you're upon the, the right way now, but keep committing sins and see where you remain upon the right way. Salib al huda, the removal of the guidance. And Alm al Nafi taking away the beneficial knowledge is because of people committing sins. Waqalu kulubana ghul. And our hearts are what? Covered or whatever. But the curse of Allah is on them because of their kufr. And Allah Taala says the meaning of the verse. And how did you not know that if it came to you, you would not believe? And He would turn their hearts. Turn their hearts and their eyes because they did not believe in it in the first. From the mazab, when they deviated, Allah caused their hearts to deviate. Fikulubihi marad, and their hearts is an illness. Fazadahum Allahu marada, Allah increases their illness. This is because of the sins, and the harms of sins. So think of it this way, that you want the haq, and to be upon the haq, to live upon the haq, 
the call to the hawk, and to die from the hawk. But with the commission of sin, this can all be pulled away from you, and the hearts can become dark, and the vasira, the, the uh, comprehend, comprehending the issues, understanding the issues, can become very weak, and you can come become like a blind man, and you can become confused and not knowing the truth because of the nub, because of the sins. So maybe this is a better way to understand the issue. Brethren is saying to brothers, which is a necessity, of course, to say, and they're saying, well, this sister did this, and this brother did that, and we got brothers doing this, and we got brothers doing that. Let them know that they may not stay upon the guidance of Allah if they keep committing these sins. Let them know that why you didn't understand that ayat of Quran because you're committing sins. Why you can't understand that hadith. You just can't get past that hadith. That hadith is not making sense to you because you're committing sins. The words of the statements of the scholars, which are clear as the sun in the midday to those upon guidance, is unclear to you, and you have all types of doubts around it, and you doubt their words, and you doubt their meanings. Why? Because your heart is full of sin, and because you're falling too many sins, and this is stopping you from understanding the issue. Sins have an effect. The akal becomes weak. The mind becomes confused. Like Ibn Taymiyyah Allah said, blind as if you were closing your eyes, even though in reality, if you were to open them, you can see the rust upon the hearts from sins. So disobeying Allah subhanahu ta'ala, there is no doubt that Allah subhanahu ta'ala opens upon the hearts of those who are righteous. He grants them understanding. al muttaqin those who have taqwa. Ibad is salaheen, the righteous servant. Why? Because of their tahara. Tahara to kulubim. Their hearts are clean from that which Allah hates. And they follow that which Allah protects our laws. No doubt He gives them clarity in the minhaj. Clarity in the aqidah. They understand the haq. They see the haq and they follow it. He gives them that which He does not give to others. Hadha kama qala Ali radiyallahu anhu. Al fahmu, understanding. Allah Taala gives a servant, or only understanding that Allah gives a servant in His book. When somebody asks Ali ibn Talib, "Do you have some special knowledge?" He said, "No, except for understanding that Allah places in the heart of a believer regarding His book. This understanding is not granted to everyone. So you think the understanding is granted to a mujrim, to a criminal who transgresses all the boundaries that Allah Taala has placed?" Who disobeys Allah Taala outwardly and inwardly? Who is in every situation, in the majority of cases, rather find himself there, places where it pleases, displeases Allah Taala? You think that this is the case that he's going to have the faham of someone who's righteous, someone who has taqwa, that he's going to understand, the, have the same clarity regarding the minhaj as someone who any up upon taqwa? No way, no way. Man amala bi ma alam, the one who acts upon what he knows, or rafahu Allah, Allah will give him that which he does not know. The Quran has shown that. Rannahu faalu ma yu aidoon abih. If they had did what they were ordered, la kana khairan lahum wa shatta tasbitan. It would have been better for them and would have given them a, 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 a more firmer foothold. Uh, and then we would have gave them, as Allah says, we even atayinahum min adunna ajran adhim, we gave them great reward. Wala hadayinahum siratun mustaqim, and we have guided them to a straight path. If they acted upon what they were supposed to do, if they had carried out their orders, did what Allah took to the order, stayed away from what Allah took to forbid. So Allah took to Allah has said that those, and this is Surah Nisa, verse 66 to 68, that those who do what, the, what he has ordered, he will guide them to the Surat al Mustaqeem. Zalik al Kitab, la reba fi, who done for who? Lil Mustaqeem. That is the book, there's no doubt in it, a guidance for who? Lil Mustaqeem. A guidance for the Mustaqeem. Wa qala ta'ala, hadha wa sa'ala al this is admonition and advices. 
and clarity for the people. Wahudu ar rahma and guidance and mercy. Liqaumin yuqinun for people who are sure. Sure does Jazzy at 20. And a verse similar to this is in Surah Araf also. So dhunub we have to stop. Dhunub we have to quit. We have to cut it out. We have to begin to be righteous. When are we going to do it? We have to become righteous. We can't have the masajid uh, talked about or the masajid of the fornicators, the masajid of the adulterers, the masajid of the, of the dope dealers, the masajid of this and that and other. No. Even though there's no doubt that bidah is worse than nasiya, this didn't mean that the salaf didn't avoid ma'asi. The salaf were the farthest away from committing sins. And this has a direct connection to our disunity. That's the hadith that we brought to this authentic that I told you. That no two individuals love one another and are together one another for the pleasure of Allah. And then you find them separated except for sin that one of them has committed. The noob separates us. Sins bring darkness upon the heart. It removes us from one another. And this leads to the second portion that I wanted to talk about, the second issue, and that is the tafarruq, splitting. All of us know the ayat that we heard our brother reciting earlier about holding on to the rope of Allah Ta'ala and don't separate. We've all heard those ayat. All of us know the ahadah. Some of them probably have them memorized. You can quote them with the sahadi and give you the taqreej of the hadith and so on and so forth. But the implementation of that it's far from us. Far from us. Far removed from us, this, this issue of implementing that which we're supposed to implement regarding unity. It gets to the point where you're almost tired of talking about unity. Because all it is is a talk. Brother's heart might get soft for a moment and a tear might drop from his eyes for a second. But then he goes out and his actions and his behavior is that of tafarruq, separation. Still caught up on the jahili tip that you can do your own thing. This was, if you look at Masai al-Jahili and Muhammad al this is what he mentions about the Arabs before Islam came. All of them were separate. I'm on my thing, you're up on your thing. I'm independent and you're independent. You do what you want to do, I do what I want to do. Not, they would not gather, they would think that it was, it was humiliating to be together as a group under one person. And they thought hurriya, freedom, what karama, honor, and prestige was being separate, was being alone. They had the, the thought pattern. This is from the issues of what? Jahiliyyah. He numbered it as the Masail al Jahiliyyah. Things that the Prophet Islam differed with the people of Jahiliyyah in. That the Prophet Islam came with unity. The Prophet Islam came with the Muslims gathering under under righteous leadership, even gathering under unrighteous leadership, as long as that unrighteousness didn't lead to kufr, so that the lives and property and honor and strength of the Muslims can be preserved, it seems we don't learn this lesson. We have understood this lesson. For if we understood this lesson, there would be one master jamet for the Salafis in Philly. One jamet masjid where every Salafi gathers for Juma, and the other masajid will be like fara, or furu, or branches, and when people will pray there when they had a necessity, or they were working in their area, or something like that. Otherwise, like, like a masallah. But there will be one masjid jana. If we understood the concept of unity, today would not be a conference, but this would be Salat al or Isha like this. Like we are now, the amount of people we are now, sitting here in this masjid, we will be like this. For this is how it's supposed to be at Fajr, at Dhuhr, at Asr, at Maghrib and Isha. But to show you that we don't understand unity, how is this masjid going to be tomorrow? Do we understand unity? From the book of Allah, from the Sunnah of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the way of the set of Saleh, to the degree where we have one to eat. Just one to eat. We're all going to one musallah like Sheikh Nasr used to do. Take them all out to one musallah and pray with them. Even wrote a book on it. 
One Musalla. Behind one brother. Don't matter who he is. None of us wants leadership, right? We're going to talk about that, inshallah. Doesn't matter. Unity. One masjid. And this is amazes me. I don't know what you do. It's like somebody who has all the ingredients to a meal, but he still can't cook it and prepare it. Yeah, okay, I got the stove there, I got the pot there, I got the water on, I got my onions over here, I got my tomatoes on the side, I got my, you know, it's all in there. I got all of this, but I can't prepare the meal. Akiratun al-wahida. I believe it's one. Minhajin al-wahida. Our methodology is one. Mashaik or not, all are the same mashaik, scholars. Everything's the same, but we can't come together. Ain't your sabab. What's the reason? If it's not aqeedah, if it's not minhaj, then it's nafs. Tiba al hawa, falling desires. Not understanding that unity is something honorable. To be one amongst the Muslims, gather together, unified, struggling together, working together, being one amongst the flock. One sheep amongst the flock is better than being separated and doing your own thing. I wonder if these words are ever going to materialize into something real. That their hearts have the ability to forgive prior mistakes or past mistakes, let alone those who like to make up future mistakes for a brother before he even commits them. Is it ever going to come to reality? You say you Salafi, and I say I'm Salafi. You're on Kitab, and I'm on Kitab. You're on Sunnah, and I'm on Sunnah. You follow as Sal Salah, I follow as Sal Salah. You refer to Sheikh Rabi, I refer to Sheikh Rabi. You refer to Salaf Hazan, I refer to Salaf Hazan. So you say Sheikh Rabi, well, I refer to Sheikh Rabi. You refer to Sheikh Rabi. And we're not together. What is it? When are we going to wake up to the reality? And there's no need, it seems, in bringing all the ayat. We've done that. Ayat at ayatun wahda. Tafsir from the Salaf. Been there, done that. Ahadith. If the words of Mustafa don't make you have unity, nothing's going to make you have unity. Describing us as one body. Describing us as one body. Nothing. Describing us as a building. That don't get you. Shada. Our hearts dead. Our hearts sick. What's wrong with our minds? How are we thinking? Because I guarantee you we're not thinking like we're supposed to be thinking. And when you read the life of the Salaf and the unity that they had and they were able to achieve, even though it preceded this unity a hundred years of war and bloodshed, Islam came, they forgot all about it. And none of us has taken a life of one another. For as I know, yet we are prevented from unity. I believe this is a punishment. Wallahi I I believe it's a punishment that we have not been granted tawfiq. For you have to have tawfiq from Allah to Ta'ala to achieve that. Anything that is expensive, anything that's worth having, anything that Allah Ta'ala has praised in his book, and the Prophet has praised in the sunnah, and we haven't achieved it. Adam at tawfiq. Adam at tawfiq. That's all. Because of many illnesses. Hasad, envy, kibber, pride, arrogance. Many illnesses. Wahda, wahda being together is something we must do. When are we going to begin to do it? When are we going to begin to do it? I'm talking to Salafis, and they can't achieve unity? Don't talk about the others. 
who are upon bidah and his biyah or shakhsiyah or whatever they are upon if people who have stated and made a declaration to the point that they are ones upon the way of the salaf and they can't achieve it something's wrong we're not thinking like Abu Bakr Siddiq even though we claim that we're on his understanding we're not thinking like Umar ibn Khattab even though we claim we're on his understanding we're not thinking like Umar ibn Affan even though we say we're on his understanding we're not thinking like Ali ibn Talib and Salim ibn Waqas and Khalid ibn Walid and the companions we're not thinking like them we're not thinking like them nor are we acting like them otherwise we would not have disunity and it seems that it's a praiseworthy quality for us just like the people of Jahiliyyah yeah man we got our own thing going we ain't with them guys we got this going we gonna do ours and let them do theirs Jahiliyyah you didn't study Masai Jahiliyyah and figure it out you don't have enough understanding of the book of Allah to figure that out that this weakens us and it causes animosity the further we are away from one another the less we know about one another the less we know about one another the easier it is to harm one another you can back about it about a brother you don't really know that well so this is the other man I wanted to talk or speak about briefly and I spoke about it on many occasions and rather than go over what has been going over before I'll just mention it briefly like that and leave it to that the other issue is Hubr Riyasat which will end with insha'Allah ta'ala Hubb al-Ja'a riyasa some of the and the salaf used to hate riyasa want a love of leadership some of the salaf said that every one of us has the fir'auni type complex some of us show it and some of us don't some of us control it some of us don't the fir'auni complex in the sense that we want to be obeyed in everything total sulta authority good or bad we want to be obeyed halal haram we want to get, uh, be obeyed sunnah or bidah we want to be obeyed this is a fir'auni type thing fir'auni type thing but those who fear Allah ta'ala can control and remove this type of ill character but those who can't destroy themselves and you'll see them destroy every community that they go into Hubriyasa Salaf has very words regarding these issues Kalabu Nu'aim Wallahi by Allah Ma haraka man haraka no one was destroyed he was destroyed illa bi hubriyasa except by loving leadership he swears wallahi by allah ma haraka man haraka illa bi hubriyasa no one was destroyed who was destroyed except by loving what leadership i got to run the show hubb sidara i got to be out front hubb dhuhur I got to I got to appear. I got to, my presence has to be known. See, this is a illness. It's a disease. Khal al-Bari rahimahullah used to check his students about this issue. He used to say, love of the of, 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 of being a parent or being someone whose appearance is known amongst the people breaks the backs. And he used to check him about that. If he saw that type of khasla or this type of quality with one of them. Check him about that. Hub al-Riyasa. Qala Ishaq. Wallahi ladhi la ilaha illa huwa. By Allah the one who none has the right to be worshipped except him alone. To remove a jibal. To remove the mountains. That are thawed, that are fixed and firm. It's easier than removing the love of leadership from the hearts of people who love leadership. قال سفيان الطوري رحمه الله كنت أتمنى I used to hope when I was young that I would have leadership 
And I would see a man sitting at the pillar answering the questions and giving for tower. And I would envy him. But then when I reached that level, then I knew what it was about. And then when he reached that level, then he knew it was a great responsibility that should be ran from. قال معمون من طلب الرياسة بالعلم صغيرا فاته علم كثير. He who seeks knowledge as a youngster so that he will have leadership, he will lose a lot of knowledge. He won't be seeking it for the right purpose. And that's why many people, let's end on tawfiq. They don't have no tawfiq on seeking knowledge. You find them six years studying here, seven years studying there, and they're going nowhere. At the opposite are people who study one year here, two year here, three year here, and benefit the ummah. Because of the difference of wanting riasa, wanting leadership. Waqalu, he said, al the humble person, from the seekers of knowledge, aqsar ilman, he has more knowledge. He said, just like in the road, the part of the road that's munkhafid, that's, that's, that's low, carries more water when it rains. Oh, who's humble and his ilm has more knowledge. Naam. Wayhaka inna riyasa. He said, Woe well, to you, valley leadership or loving of leadership is, or leadership is ma'una faqil is a great big responsibility, he means rather. That, lo- want, that leadership itself is too big a responsibility. Faqil, heavy. Heavy. Nah. And some of them said, be the tail, don't be the head, for the tail will get to success and the head will go. First thing to be destroyed from an animal or something is the, the head of it. Tail of it is usually safe. Hakada. Bashar ibn Harib said, in the Asa Valley, leadership comes down from the heavens. And it doesn't hit the head of the, except the one who doesn't want it. And this is another matter for the matters of Jahiliyyah. Look at Islam and the leadership in Islam, opposed to the leadership of these kuffar. Leadership of kuffar with the taghuti, democratic kufr. They come in front of you, smile in your face, shake your hand, tell you everything about themselves that is in a good light. So what? Saying, I want your leadership. I want your support. I'm the best man for the job. I'm the one who should be there. Put me in office. I'm the man. Right? Whereas in Islam, it's what? He who ask for position of authority. And this is the majority of cases. Right? He shouldn't be granted. Not to be granted. And I say the majority of cases because sometimes it's a doror or necessity. Like when Yusuf al Islam asked to be put over the treasure. Rajul Munasib, suitable for that, and there was a need there. But in general, one who says, Give it to me, I should be the leader of the people. This is the one who is not granted it in Islam. So from Jahiliya is to go out there and take the leadership and demand the leadership and this desire for the leadership. What, what cause can it be that we would, I mean, how many Umara do we need? How many Ru'asa do we need? How many you know, directors do we need? And you come to some places, everybody in there is a director. Subhanallah. Hubba Riyasa. They used to say that he who talks before his time will be exposed and humiliated before his time. And he who seeks leadership before his time will be forbidden by Allah Taala at his time and from achieving it. One of them said a piece of poetry, al kelb the dog, Ahwan, is easier to live with 
وهو نهاية في خصاصة and he's the lowest he's the utmost filth ممن ينافس في رئاسة than the one who competes to be a leadership قبل أوقات رئاسة from before the time of leadership it's easier to live with a dog than to live with a person who all he has on his mind is leadership and you all know the hadith of the Prophet Islam, that a man and he did what two Two wolves do not do what to a flock of sheep. Uh, huh? More dangerous on huh? More dangerous than a flock of sheep than what? I'm gonna let him finish it since he started it. <laughs> uh, I need the woo. Who? Who's more dangerous than that? The one that loves wealth and status. Jayid, the one who loves wealth and status. One who has hirs al jah. You know I mean? This is more dangerous. Imagine what wolves would do to sheep. What do they do? Destroy them. Eat them. Blood everywhere. Skin everywhere. Fur everywhere. They're not as dangerous as the guy sitting there wanting what? Wealth and status. Wealth and status. Does this disease exist amongst us or not? Huh? You think it's part of the problem why we can't have unity? Do you think I'm asking? Or am I off I'm I'm off the mark? I'm off the mark, Achi, you're off the mark, eh? Tefahi, stop. Kazalamta. You've done some wrong. You've been unjust. Somebody check them. This is reality, Akhi. This is reality. He said, if you see the people in their time not seeking knowledge to understand, but to compete with their companions and to prepare for augmentation and to do injustice. So the Asa, you can become in love with leadership. He says, he who loves leadership, it is feared that it will overtake his heart and he will invent the innovation and are going astray. Rather than lose what? His position. Rather than lose what? His position. One of them said, Hubriyasa has taken over the earth until people have transgressed against one another. There's other tojihat that have come regarding this issue. Maybe I may read one of them as we're dealing with it. We end here, inshallah ta'ala. Nah. He said it's a disease that's hidden in the heart. This khubri asa. Can't find it at this point. Yeah, and nafs ended with this statement, inshallah. Or nafs, la shak in Allah iradat makmuma. And in the soul or the self, it has desires that are blameworthy. Min hubbid dunya, loving the dunya. Wa talab al ulu, seeking highness throughout the land. Wa manafat al khalq, and competing with the creatures. Wa talab al jah, wanting the position. One in a high position. And other than that, which has been criticized in the legislation. And the nature of man is dhul wal baghi. Baghi. And it's dhul and transgression. Wrongdoing and transgression. In the kind of the luman, jahulan. Right? Really, mankind is the luman, jahulan. So there can come some things that move this thing that's inside. To appear because of desires. And it may make that person reject the truth, even though he knows in fact it's the truth, following his desire. Wanting to keep his position. Wanting to keep that which is his tree achieved to the dunya. So you find that these type of individuals, who khalifun al haq, they go against the truth, while they have knowledge that they're going against the truth, seeking their position in the dunya. And they like to make it clear to the people, or they try to make it appear to the people, 
that they're really supporting the hawk. When actually they're not supporting anything but themselves. Qala Abu Wafa Ali ibn Aqil al-Hanbali Loving riasa, loving leadership and leaning towards the dunya and bragging and boasting huh? and to be busy with that and calling to that which will bring fame and these type of things how they are matters that take you away from the truth these are matters that will take you away sadif, move you away and al haq from the truth from the truth that's just some of what it uh, can bring at this point there's many other statements of the Salaf regarding this but I, you know truthfully I believe that one or two statements regarding this is enough the illness is there it's a matter of seeking some solution to the problem getting up in the middle of the night and begging Allah to remove that from the hearts but we hope that in the future ta'ala, we can come together and that there will be in fact the Ibnillah ta'ala less dunub so more clarity and more understanding and more guidance and there will be less tafarruq but brother inshallah there will be unity and there will be these diseases that we have we will inshallah ta'ala have checked them or have removed them and then we may be the Ibnillah ta'ala we may be in a situation where we will in fact have a masjid jami one masjid for the salafis that they gather in the other masajid being the masajid that uh, needed or dealt with for, for need or necessity in that particular place or location or so dollar centers have them all throughout the Philadelphia area if you will the unity is a key factor we cannot go on like this be suspicious of one another finding fault with one another talking about one another feeling bad about one another for past mistakes or for future mistakes or for imagined mistakes it's time that we grow out of that and some of our brothers have been involved in type of mindset for years they were young when it started and now they're old do we want the next generation coming up with this mentality they should know nothing but love for those of Ahl Sunnah nothing but love for Ahl Al-Athar nothing but love for those on the way of the Salafi Da'wah I mean, Madonna, as long as he's upon Kitab, as soon as we're side of Salah, then he's your brother. Then he's your brother. As every Muslim is your brother, but he's your brother, Akhas. From your closest of brothers, because he's upon the correct way. On the correct way. And everything about what we know is that this is how it's supposed to be. For the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Huh? Because they are those upon the Sunnah and they gather up on it. They are those upon the sunnah and they gather up on it. And the hand of Allah took out with the jama'ah. Just take a hadith for how I said it. Don't misinterpret it. Don't add nothing to it. Don't focus it in a different direction. Take it just as it said. And a jama'ah. And shaitan is and he, and he, uh, closer to one than he is to two. The bigger the jama'ah, the better, right? There's safety in that. There is quwa in that. If we ever woke up and we had a different heart than we went to bed with. Full of iman. Full of taqwa. If we ever, ever, ever come to the understanding of this matter. If we ever can implement this. If we ever can act upon this. It will be amazing what we will see. It will be amazing what we can do. But right now we are in a point to it seems of tunnel vision. We only see things one way, and that's our way. Tibal hawa, following desire. I got a personal problem with this brother. I got a personal issue with that one. Well, I haven't forgot what he did five or six years ago. Well, what about that time? Remember that time seven years ago? Kether. And hold him for that. Never let it go. But understand that Allah would deal with a servant as a servant deals with his brother. You keep holding that and let Allah Ta'ala hold your sins for you. Keep holding that and let Allah, Allah Ta'ala hold your sins for you. There's no khalas, no, no, no getting away from that. No escape from that. Then you wish it was east, between east and west. And you were in the west and your sins was in the east. 
Subhanallah, ikhwan. This is no game that we are uh, involved in. It's a very, very serious, serious, serious issue. Uh, you know, it's by the tawfiq of Allah that we found this guidance. Honey, we would not have been guided to it if it was not for the guidance of Allah. But if you are bumped into this and stumbled into this, you and stumbled in something adheem. Something that you can't play with. Something that you better not mess with. More dangerous than dynamite. More dangerous than, than a nuclear explosion. Talking about adab. Punishment from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And the punishments of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is from various levels. It's from various levels. And I believe, in the bottom of my heart, that this disunity that we have is one of those punishments. هذا وصى 